The Bali starling has been driven to the brink of extinction exclusively through poaching for the pet trade. Endemic to the island of Bali, in 2006, there were just 10 birds left in the wild. This man and his team are working tirelessly with local communities to ensure that the beautiful Bali starling is not lost to us forever. The Bali starling is one of the world's most endangered birds. As their name suggests, they used to be found exclusively on the small island of Bali in Indonesia. It's a magnificent bird with a beautiful song. But the Bali starling's beauty is also its downfall. Its popularity as a pet, which led to dwindling numbers, drove the price of owning one sky high. And as a result, poachers just about managed to annihilate the wild population. Six years ago, there were only 10 left. And that was when Dr. Bayou, founder of NGO Friends of the National Parks Foundation, decided to step in and try to save this species. Uh, the Bali starling extinction is very much about pet trading. Uh, initially, it was an export uh, activity when it's announced as a, like one of uh, endemic species of Bali, and Bali has quite good uh, popular name, then people overseas want to get this bird because it's unique from Bali. Then the funny thing about it, then when the government declared this bird has become endangered species, even local collector or bird keep, the people who like to keep bird as a pet started to, 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 to want to have it. And I think the collector mentality, the more rare the item, the more they want. So the price of this bird has become more and more expensive until at one point there's no wild population you can find. Dr. Bayou realized if there was going to be any chance for the starling at all, he had to get them off the island of Bali and start a wild breeding program somewhere else. That place is the sleepy island of Nusa Penida. Yeah, we started the project in Nusa Penida with a thought about find an alternative uh, habitat for the Bali starling because the last habitat uh, that they have in West Bali National Park is not secure anymore. This island is about 14 kilo, or 16 kilometers. The closest this one between this island to Bali is 16 kilometers, which is no way for this bird can fly back to Bali. So we can isolate the area here. Nusa Penida may be far from the matting crowds of Bali, but it's not a deserted island. What was to stop the local population from poaching the birds here too? The communities live a traditional rural lifestyle in about 46 villages dotted around the island. There is no major industry, and as a result, not much opportunity to earn a decent living. Dr. Bayou knew he had to get the local communities involved in conserving the starling, and to find them alternative sources of income to poaching. That's when he came up with the idea of a goat bank. <laughs> The Goat Bank is a program whereby farmer groups in the area are literally loaned a pair of goats from a sponsor. After two years, they have to return two goats at the same size and sex, but they can keep any offspring. Instead of farming cattle, which is difficult on Nusa Penida due to the poor soil quality and lack of grass, goats provide a much hardier option. Plus, they eat just about anything. <laughs> To help the women of the island economically, the traditional art of weaving has been given a boost by another of the Foundation's programs. This ancient art is a highly specialized skill, which is only learned by lessons passed down from generation to generation. Dr. Bayou is encouraging the use of local plants to dye thread, many of which are readily available on the island. So when it's finished, it's going to be like this. Other projects include a nursery where indigenous trees, like the Balinese teak, are grown, effectively ensuring that the communities have wood in the future and exercise in sustainability. Bayou's conservation plan is definitely working if Bali starling numbers are anything to go by. From only 10 wild birds a few years ago, there are now over 100 today, and they do seem to be thriving in Nusa Penida. By getting the support of the local community to help secure the future of the Bali starling, this bird has been given a new chance at survival.
As Dr. Bayou says, Nusa Penida is only a halfway house for the birds. Of course, first prize would be to return them to their native Bali. But until the day the illegal pet trade ceases to exist and sufficient legal consequences for poachers are actively enforced, the birds are staying here. And there is no doubt that had Dr. Bayou and the Friends of the National Parks Foundation not stepped in, there would probably not be a Bali starling left in the wild anywhere. <laughs>